Hey everyone, so this is just a quick video to show you how to set up a private NuGet feed, like a local um, NuGet file repository feed, not using any kind of websites or anything to call NuGet. Like let's say if you wanted to have something cached locally on some kind of build process and you don't want to actually uh, need any kind of you know website um, API calls to download your NuGets. Um, and I'll just explain the reason, you know, I, I, I need it personally, um, was that, you know, if I go here to this original nougat.config in this, in this sample project is that, um, you know, I, I was calling uh, teleric.com and, you know, when you go to nougat.teleric.com, it uses like a plain text password, you know, down here. Like if I scroll down, you'll see the password for, um, you know, connecting there, which is for my, my user account, which one, I didn't like how, you know, that's in source control. You know, any passwords for the most part should be not in source control. If you can obviously avoid it, um, that, that would be, you know, the best case scenario. And, um, you know, quite honestly, periodically this, you know, site, essentially the nougat.teleric.com would go down or, you know, we'd have to put in like a retry policy. So the build would have to like retry a couple times because we're assuming that once in a while that nougat.teleric.com would, would go down. But then it kind of brought up a different point. Like maybe you want some resilience, meaning that let's say if internet is down, you still want to be able to build your code, push it out, whether you can push it out or not you know, the build for the most part should be, um, you know, almost like an offline build supported scenario. So this is how, you know, the NuGet config looked before. I have some uh, dif different private NuGets um, in, you know, Azure artifacts and then the top level NuGet.org. So um, basically what you have to switch it to for the most part um, after looking online and, and, you know, the GitHub examples and, um, basically you add this part here, um, and you can put it, you know, wherever you want. I just did at main.nougat as a folder. Um, and I put all of the offline nougats in there and then you want to add this clear line here. And then the first one it should do is essentially look local before it tries to go in order down the list. Um, and it did, it did take a little bit to, um, I had to go into visual studio and the, settings and tools and, and try to clear some of the cache for for nuget before it actually started using this file kind of properly um and then you you can't see it because it's not in the solution here but if i just hop over to the actual file explorer um i kind of like move this over for you um you'll see that there is a folder there um i i assume i guess i could probably just go um you know show all files or whatever um the hell is it? Da, da. I'm not sure why I can never find stuff when I need it. It's like show all files. Anyhow, so <clears throat> I have it here and then have all of these, you know, nougats, right? And the, the thing, the thing is I'm just using it for Teleric at first, but essentially you could put in any, um, N U P K G, uh, file in there and it would kind of use those first and as you can see I keep a history of the old one versus the new one Here's 906 versus 1108 and that kind of allows you to kind of roll back locally and the other thing with um, You know Teleric or any license based component um, model that uses a private nougat um, feed like like this one here is that you know as soon as your license expires essentially um, you're not able to connect with your plain text password in uh, nougat can, uh, dot config so having a an, an offline downloaded copy of those nougat packages allows you to um, build and, and restore and all of that stuff um, even if you do not want to pay the maintenance and upgrade your um, you know and continue paying because at the end of the day you did purchase it during that time you do own you know a license for those versions you're just not going to get new ones but you should should still be able to do a build um, in Azure DevOps or Jenkins or whatever build process um, you're using so yeah so essentially um, you know going back that's the old one and the new one here is kind of these lines here, you'll notice here it's in this level and then under package sources, you have clear. And then I'm putting that here. I just called it whatever this, you can call whatever you want. 
Um, and I do believe that there is certain folders you can't put your local repository of NuGet packages in. I think one of them is like NuGet packages or NuGet. You, you'll get some weird error messages. My advice is just like make some generic cool folder that is like very apparent that that's what it is for the local repository path. Um, so I uh, showed you what's in there. And then lastly, just over onto like um, Azure DevOps. So I didn't really get any build um, uh, weirdness when I when I did this um, because if if you look here, what what I essentially did was I removed um, the part where it actually calls the private uh, third party component library vendors NuGet to their uh, private NuGet, and instead I just you know it's not you, you can see it's not here, um, and I, and I just put it here, so you know pretty resilient um, you know theoretically if it was going to get working which it, it did so that was kind of nice so the only thing i did really have to do is i had this restore line here um and this is just in the the kind of the gui editor but you know if you're looking at yaml pretty much the same i i, I couldn't um get this to work with the restore so it was kind of funny i'm not sure the ramifications on it but it seems to work just fine but um you know it was trying to, you know, do a restore here um, from that file path, which it normally worked. But as soon as I disabled this and just reran it, it worked. So I just had to remove the restore line. And you know, if anyone knows, um, you know, uh, why that is, or um, or the benefits of the restore command, um, or anything I'm missing out by not having it in there, please let me know in the comments below. But for the most part, everything's working by just not doing a restore, do a build, publish, whatever you have to do in your um, CI CD pipeline. Um, yeah, so that was it. Pretty cool way. If you want to have an offline NuGet uh, feed, throw all of your um, you know, NuGet uh, files in there, and then you don't really have to worry about even NuGet.org or anything like that. You could have it all downloaded locally um, for those versions, which you know, could be more resilient in your situation, uh, especially if it have a big complicated build process. And the last thing I'll just share you is a kind of like cool thing that many people know about, but for the people that don't know about it, it can be pretty eye opening. Um, if you have any of these type of files, right? All you really have to do is if you want to get at the source code in here is you can actually go to rename. Um, and I'll just say, you know, dot I guess zip, okay, and it says, hey, you know, you're going to break this file, are you sure? I'm like, yep, all right, and then I can go into it, and that's it. Uh, you know, the the file extension, you know, nupkg, or nuget package, is essentially just a, a rebranding or something on, or a file extension rebranding on the zip extension. So if you ever wanted to get inside those, that's how you get there, but uh, yeah. Hope you guys liked that. Uh, stay tuned and I'll see you next time.